Hallelujah. Once again, for those who are on Zoom, God bless you. It wouldn't be great to have you. You, you missed out. I know you were dancing in your front room, on your tables, on your chairs. We thank God for you. But it's good to be among your brother and sister. Father, we thank you for this vessel that you have chosen. And this anointing upon his life. This anointing upon his life. You have entrusted him. All the days of his life, you have kept him pure and clean. And now God, as you speak to your people, what you have deposited into him, you have downloaded a word of teaching. Pray, O oh God, that you will continue to bless him and his wife. I pray today supernatural miracles will come to them. Amen. Supernatural prayers will be answered Amen. as they continue to walk in the ordinance of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless him further in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Just want to say thank you to uh, Bishop and First Lady and uh, Pastor Gabriel for entrusting um, me to stand here to, do, uh, to speak what the Lord wants to speak to all of us today. So just want to say thank you and we give God all the glory. I hope the people online can hear. Thumbs up from Arnold, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's, it's, it's amazing. We were singing a song, I've got joy like a river. <laughs> we'll be, we thank the Lord, we'll be talking about a river today as well at, at some point. So we give glory to God. And we'll be talking about the Holy Spirit as well today. So just quickly recapping what we studied last time, because I, I know I have not been around for at least a week. We talked about uh, believing demands action. For those who are not here and today is your first, uh, first uh, night, we talked about believing. You know, you cannot say you believe and not act on it. Believing demands that you act on it. If you say you believe in something, you have to do. You have to act on what you believe. Believing demands action. We talked about Genesis chapter 1. God creating the earth, the Holy Spirit hovering, and God speaking. And bringing into being everything that we see. And we said you have the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Of the Holy One. You have the Holy Spirit in you. And Jesus went about doing good he was anointed he said how god anointed jesus and he went about doing good and healing those who are oppressed of the devil we have sung right now i have an unction of the holy one you have the unction of the holy spirit in you the same holy spirit was in jesus christ is in you right now and you too can go about doing good healing those who are oppressed of the devil led by the holy spirit not doing your own thing, but led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah, so to remind you again, we talked about uh, God has empowered us to, be, to do what he has done. Our God is a doing God. Uh, Jesus Christ, his son, was a doing man and God. And we, as his children, we are doing people. So just as our father is a doing father, we as his children should be doing children. Otherwise, who is our father? We are children of our father. Our father does, our father acts, and we act as well. Yes, yeah, so, and then we talked about something called mental ascent. I don't know whether anyone can remember what that means. Mental ascent admires, admits, but does not act. What, anyone's mental ascent? From anybody, what does that mean? For those. <laughs> I think, Pastor, I think we might need a microphone for the front for Pastor Elect, Cecilia. Okay, so I think Arnold's online. He's got oh. an answer as well. Who, who was the if first you want one? To unmic him. 
think Arnold. Arnold was the first one. Okay, let's hear from Arnold. Reading. Yes, what he talked about was hard. Um, what, he, what he talked about was head faith. But what we need is hard faith, and that's believing what God has said and act on it. Perfect. Head faith versus believing in your heart. Hard faith. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Appreciate that. Thank Good you. Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And then Pastor Alex Cecilia also wanted to contribute. Yes, I wanted yeah. to say the same, head faith and heart faith. Mm -hmm. Always waiting for physical evidence, That's right. but believing in your heart. Mm -hmm. So heart faith is believing that God has healed you mm -hmm. and act on the word of God. Mm -hmm. And when you gave us the example of the water bottle. Ah, that's it. That's right. On that note, I'll drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> teacher it's easy to forget to drink <laughs> yes um sometimes Misha prepares a cup of tea and then and then it, it goes cold and i have to put it back in the microwave yes <laughs> oh. I, I thought I had people, to, to, you know, I had friends. Yes. <laughs> wow. Praise be to God. So thank you for the contribution. Yeah, mental ascent is faith looking for physical evidence. So you're looking to see things happening before you, before you actually are convinced that it has happened. But heart faith the faith that God speaks about, true faith, is believing in your heart. So although you might not see it physically, no evidence, but you know it's done. You, I, I believe Pastor was preaching yesterday about now. God is a God of now. When you believe, the, when you believe, you have those things. You will have, but you have those things. That is the true faith. You have those things. You're not waiting to see them come or to see them happen but you have them already yes so that is the true kind of faith uh, what else did we talk about we talked about the word of god if act on it the bible on your shelf does not make a difference the bible in your hand does not make a change even if you read the bible and not act on what you read your situation remain the same. So you have to read, believe, and act. Yeah? It's not a storybook. When, you know, when, when people read it, they'll say they're finished reading a novel. The story, it remains a story in their head. But our, the word of God is not a storybook. It is living and active. Living and active. So you act on it. And what God intends for the word to do, it will do. It will do. It is the sword of the spirit. A soldier does not leave the sword in the, in the sheath. I think it's the sheath. When they're going to war, when they see the enemy come, they don't say, wow, I got a powerful sword. You know, I am a dangerous person. I got a sword. They actually pull it out and use it. The word of God is not a storybook. It's not something just to be admired. It's something to be used. We have to act on it. We have to use it. It is the sword of the spirit. It is not a trophy. It is to be used. And then, so I think that's, that's what we covered last time, just to give a bit of a recap. And today we're going to talk about, the title today is Acting on the Word is letting Christ act through you. Acting on the word is letting Christ act through you. I'll repeat it again for those who are still writing. Acting on the word is letting Christ act through you. I hope we all cut, we, 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 we've got that down, yeah? yeah? Okay. Anyone else has, have I left anyone behind? Okay. Perfect. 
So we talked about God needs a life. God needs a man on earth in order to fulfill his purpose on earth. If God wants to do something on earth, he uses a man. He uses us to do it. We talked about Adam. God had a purpose he wanted to fulfill on earth and he used Adam. God had a purpose he wanted to do on earth and he used Noah. <clears throat> we talked about Abraham. God had a purpose on earth he needed to fulfill uh, through man and he chose Abraham. God had a purpose on earth he wanted to fulfill on earth and he used Jesus, who was man and who was God. And now, in this time, God has a purpose he wants to fulfill on earth and he needs you and he needs you the same way he, he needed Adam Noah Abraham Moses all the men of God the great men of God the men of faith we have read about now and the same way he used Jesus he needs you to fulfill his purpose in this time all through the ages God has had a purpose and will that he wants to fulfill on earth. But he wants a man. He wants to work with a man. He wants to do it through man. And that man is not Adam or Noah. In this time, it's not Adam, it's not Noah. Unless your name is Noah. <laughs> Noah is about somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. He wants you. The Lord wants to use you right now. So you are called. We are all called. Those who are believers, we are called. Amen. What are we called to do? To do God's purpose and will on earth. Amen. You are called. Noah was called. Adam was called. You are called. Amen. You're not inferior. You're no less than them. The same God who called them is the same God who has called you. Amen. Now, we say, this is my time. We, was, we were confessing that. Yes, this is your time. God wants to use you in this time Amen. to fulfill his will and purpose on earth. His good, his pleasing, his perfect will on earth. So let's take encouragement in that. So we've talked about the people like Adam, Noah. You know, they had God speaking to them. They believed and they acted. Believing demands action. They believed and they acted. So the same way they were, God was able to fulfill his purpose on earth is the same way he wants to fulfill his purpose on earth through you. Listening to what God is saying in his word, believing it and acting. And we said acting on the word is letting Christ act through you. We haven't got to that part yet, but we'll see. We'll see. Christ Jesus acts through us when we believe and act on the word. So how does Jesus Christ act through you when you believe and act on the word? Believing and action makes Jesus act through you. Anywhere you are, at your job, on the street, Christ can act through you. If you believe in his word and you act, you allow Christ to act through you. Remember, we are the body of Christ. He is the head. We are the body. If he wants to do anything on earth, he does it through his body. Believing and acting on the word is allowing Christ to act through you. Let's read John chapter 1. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. As we read this, we're going to find out how, we're building a picture on how Jesus Christ acts through us when we believe in the word of God and we act on it. John chapter one, from verse one to 14. And maybe not the amplified because there's quite a lot of <laughs> verses there. <laughs> huh? I believe we can read the Amplified when we go home uh, in the interest of time. Yeah. So anyone there, maybe New King James, uh, 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 another version, please. Uh, 
Right, John chapter 1. From verse 1 to 14. From verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man who comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And, he be and we beheld his glory, the, gl uh, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, thank you. Praise be to God. So we said, when we acting on the word is letting, letting Christ act through you. <clears throat> we have talked about acting on the word. And in John chapter 1 to 14, it reveals, the word of God reveals to us who is the word. Because the word is a person. Who is the word? We said, acting on the word is letting Christ act through you. Who is the word according to this verse? Anyone? Jesus. And how do we know that? The word says so. Uh, could, could anyone give me the verses that uh, show us that Jesus is the word? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The word was God. So that's a good one. The word was God. So the word is a person and the word is God. Another verse. Perfect. Perfect. The word became flesh. So the word was God and the word became flesh. God became flesh. And who is that? Jesus Christ. And he says, and dwelt among us. Who dwelt among us? Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus. And we have seen his glory. Glory as the only son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This, the word, is Jesus. The word is Jesus. When we act on the word, we let Jesus Christ act through us. The word and Jesus are one. The word is Jesus. When you act on the word, you let Jesus act through you. For you, Because when you act on the word, the word is working through you. And who is the word? Jesus. When we act on the word, Jesus Christ works through us. The word is living and active. So that is the answer to the statement of how is it when we act on the word Jesus works through us because he is the word and when you act on the word you are allowing him to act through you you are letting him act through you we said all things in john chapter 1 verse 3 it says all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made jesus is still making things through us by his word through us by his word. Although this is talking about creation, but it's also talking about now. In creation, we know the world was formless and void. And God regenerated the world by speaking the word. Jesus went about doing good, healing those who were oppressed of the devil. The situation in Jesus' time is, was not 
how God intended it to be. People being oppressed by the devil. And Jesus healed those who were oppressed of the devil. Where you're working, uh, where, you're, where you're going on the street, where you live, things might not be aligning there with the way God wants them to align. But Jesus wants to walk through you by his word. Let's read that one again. John chapter 1 verse 3. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. There's no way we can make a change where we are without Jesus. It has to be through him. It has to be through his word. We cannot make a difference anywhere we are on our own power, on our own might, on our own wisdom, on anything. We cannot, we cannot make anything here on this earth without Christ. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. So when we act on the word, Christ makes things through us. He changes situations through us. He acts through us. When we act on the word, Christ acts through us. Without him was not anything made. He makes things through us. He acts through us. He changes situation through us. When we act on the word, we are submitting to our Lord Jesus when you're saying, have your way. Have your way. And Christ acts through us. And whatever situation that did not line up with the word of God, it is changed to align with the will of God. Yeah? I hope that makes sense so far. <clears throat> so in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Anyone there? For we are laborers together with God. Mm. They are God's hasdri. Hasdri. They are God's building. Mm. So we are God's fellow workers. We are fellow workers with God. When you act on the word, Christ works through you. You're working hand in hand with Christ. You're a fellow worker with God. When we believe and act on the word, we are fellow workers with God. We are working with God, hand in hand with God, because Christ is working through you. But you have to do your part. You believe, you act, Christ works through you. We are God fellow workers. <clears throat> so when we act on the word, Jesus Christ works through you. And what does he work through you to do? To fulfill God's will and purposes on earth. Sorry. So when we act on the word, Christ works through you to fulfill God's will and purposes on earth. To fulfill God's will and purposes on earth through you. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. So this is the Lord's Prayer. Anybody there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will. Whose will? God's will. And what does God want to do with his will? He wants it done. Action. God's will, that's his word. But he wants his word to be done. Your will be done. What is the will of God? The word of God. That is the will of God. That's what God wants. That is, that's, what, that's God's plan for mankind. That's his will. What does God 
want, uh, what does God want with his will? He wants it to be done. He doesn't just want us to know his will and then that's it. He wants us to do it. Your will be done. Where does he want it done? On earth. As it is in heaven. So that things on earth line up with how things are in heaven. Things on earth and, uh, and, and heaven line up. Through who? You. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who is on earth? Good you. Yeah. Who is, on, who is in heaven? God. When you act on the word of God, you're acting on the will of God. Christ is working through you to make the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. So it is our job. God wants us to fulfill his will on earth. When we pray God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, it's you he's going to use to do that. We don't say that and then we sit down and say God is, that's it, it's done. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. God wants you to fulfill his will on earth. We need to know his will, but it's not just head knowledge for us to sit on. We are to act on his will. Know his will, act on his will. And Christ acts through you. And his will, God's will, which is God's word, is done here on earth as it is in heaven. Through who? You. You and me. Amen. I hope that makes sense. Yes, sir. And uh, yes, sir. I haven't confused anybody. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. So, how does God have his will? How, how will God have his will done? If you believe and act on his word, led by the spirit, then God fulfills his will on earth. Believe and act on his word, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And his will will be done on earth. We have to be led by the Holy Spirit. The word and the Holy Spirit go hand in hand. You remember Genesis? The word, world was formless and void. The Holy Spirit was hovering. God said, we see God the Father, we see God the word, and we see the Holy Spirit. The word of God, God the Father, the word of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit always work hand in hand. So when we read the Bible, the Holy Spirit reveals the will of God to us. And the Holy Spirit gives us instructions. And when we act on those instructions, we're acting on the word of God. We'll be led by the Holy Spirit. We have to be led by the Holy Spirit. We don't just open the Bible and then we say, oh, it says do this and that. It just says do this and that and you just do it. Best. Oh my, you could end up on a... <laughs> you could end up on a verse and... Eh? <laughs> oh, Jesus wept. It doesn't mean now you start weeping as well. So you have to be spirit-led. But when you read the word of God, when you read the word of God, let's engage the Holy Spirit. Let's ask, Holy Spirit, I'm about to read the word of God. I cannot understand this in my own wisdom. I cannot Google this. I need you to explain it to me. Make it plain for me. Explain it to me like maybe you're explaining something to a very little child. Make it simple. Make it plain for me. Help me to understand it. Even if it's one verse and all I spend today is just one verse. I just need, I don't want to live here without understanding. Amen. The Holy Spirit will not ignore you. He's our helper. He's our teacher. Amen. God said he will teach you all things. That's, his, that's what his purpose is, to teach us. He will make it plain for you. And he also, we ask how to apply it. The Holy Spirit will also show you how to apply what you have read. How do I apply this? How do I apply this verse that I've read at work? How do I apply this, you know, in where I am? How do I apply this with my wife? How do I apply this with my children? He will show you the practical, how to apply it. And when you act 
on what he tells you. God's will will be done. Amen. Where you are, in your family as it is in heaven, at your job as it is in heaven, in your relationship with your children as it is in heaven, in your relationship with your spouses as it is in heaven. Amen. Whatever situation that may be, apply the word of God, led by the Holy Spirit, you always get results. So if we can go to, it is amazing, you know, it's just amazing the way, you know, God is amazing, you know, that he wants to work through us. God, the almighty God, the King of kings, Lord of lords, the one who created heaven and earth, created everything. He created all the things people scratch their heads about, scientists trying to figure out what happened. He created all those things, things that people don't even know about. They're coming up with theories, and that's the best they can come up with. God created all of that. He created wisdom itself. Even wisdom itself, he created it. Now, this mighty God, awesome God, excellent God, God that we don't have adjectives for, he wants to walk through you. That's amazing, isn't it? It's just it's amazing. And why read first John chapter three verse one. First John chapter three verse one. First John chapter three verse one. First John chapter three verse one, reading from the Amplified. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so are we. For this reason, the world does not know us because it did not know him. That's right. Amen. That's right. You see that amazing love. He wants to walk through us. He wants to walk through us. That's love. That is love, that he, he has a dream, he has a vision for this world. He has a dream and a vision for this time right now. And he, who does he want to use? He wants to use you. Yeah, he wants to use us. If someone say right now, uh, who is that? Oh, I just got a call the other day from uh, Elon Musk. And Elon Musk uh, is a guy who owns Tesla for those people who do not know. And he just called me and he said he has this project, he wants to work with me. People be like, wow. Wow, Elon Musk wants to use me, you know, what wants to work with me, you know, on a project, you'll feel, feel like, oh man, this is amazing. Now, the most high God who's created all things, he wants to work with you. He has a project, he wants to work with you. And he's called you on, his, on, the, on the Bible. He's called you, you say, hey, brother, so, uh, so and so, my child, so and so, I have a project. I want to work with you on, in Banbury. A special project. I didn't make this project for any other person, just for you. Amen. And I want you. I, I, I've chosen you. You're the, you the man for the job Amen. or the woman for the job. Amen. You. And you didn't go to any interview and pass an interview. His own was qualified us through our Lord Jesus. We believed in our Lord Jesus and he qualified you. Now God calls you and says, hey, I got, I got a project. I want to work with you. Amen. Are you up for it? He wants to work. Jesus Christ wants to act through you. I, you have to act, believe and act on the word. <clears throat> so Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 to 11. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 to 11. Anybody? Oh, uh, Brother Ian? Uh, Isaiah 55, uh, 9 to 11. Mm -hmm. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways higher than your ways. 
and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bare and sprout, and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. God is giving us an illustration of, of you have, he's saying you have rain, you have snow, you know, it falls down to the ground. It makes the land wet. The seed soaks up the water. The seed grows. You know, depending on what seed it is, it bears the fruit of its kind. Say it is wheat, it grows, and that wheat is made into bread. Or someone else takes a seed from the same uh, wheat plant and plants it again, and it becomes another wheat. So, you see, the rain came to the earth, it produced something. And the seed received the water and produced something. The, 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 the seed became bread. The bread fulfilled a purpose. Someone ate it. The seed which came from the plant was, was replanted. It fulfilled a purpose. Another seed, another plant grew from that. God's word always has a purpose. Just the same way the rain falls, it does not go, go back as rain. It comes and fulfills a purpose on earth. The word of God, which comes from him, from his mouth, when it comes on earth, it does not go back to him void as it is. It goes back to him having fulfilled the purpose Amen. he has sent it for. <clears throat> and who are the sowers? Who are the eaters? Who are those who make acts on the word of God? Me and you. Amen. So just looking at that illustration we saw there, God has given us a guarantee mm. that his word will always get results. It will fulfill his purpose. If we act on it, it will always fulfill his purpose. Amen. That's God's guarantee. That's God's guarantee. Let's go to... Let's go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7, 37 to 38. John chapter 7. John chapter 7, 37 to 38. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. Now on the last and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and called out in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let, them, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who adheres, to trust, who adheres to trust in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow continually rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. Whoever believes in Jesus, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. If you believe in Jesus, you will do as he has commanded. Believing demands action. If you believe in him, as, as the scripture has said, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Let's read Isaiah chapter 35 verse 7. Uh, uh, Isaiah 35, uh, verse 7. Isaiah 35, verse 7. Anybody? Isaiah 35, verse 7. And the burning sand mirage will become a pool of water and the thirsty ground springs of water in the halt of jackals where they lay resting 
grass becomes reeds and rushes. Amen. 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 And in John chapter, we'll come back to those verse, verses. Uh, we'll go back to, we, talked, we read John chapter, chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. To th yes, Paul? Just go a little bit slow, that everybody's getting back. Ah, okay, okay. I'll uh, slow down a little bit. So actually, let's go back to John chapter 37. Oh, sorry, sorry. John 7, uh, verse 37. John 7, verse 37 to verse 38. Oh, are, we, are we all there? Is everybody there? Oh. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. If we just wait for a little bit, make sure everyone catches up. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. Okay, there. Uh, so this is the Gospel of John, yeah? Gospel of John. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm. Amen. Thank you, thank you. And then 38, uh, uh, that's to 38, and then 39 says, I'll read it. Now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not glorified. We'll come back to that one. So believing demands action. When we believe in our Lord Jesus, out of our belly, out of our heart, will come out rivers of living water. We're just introducing, we're just introducing here. And then Isaiah 35, what I'll do is, I know we have read it before, but I'll read it. Isaiah chapter 35, verse seven. Isaiah chapter 35, verse seven. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 7. Okay, microphone, go microphone there. The burning sand will become a pool and thirsty ground bubbling springs in the haunty where the jackal once lay. Grass and reeds, papyrus will grow. Amen. Amen. We've talked about those who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. 
And when we believe in Jesus, we act on what he says. And when we act on, on what he says, we are led by the Holy Spirit. We talked about rivers of living water in John. It talks about the Holy Spirit. At this point, the disciples didn't know about the Holy Spirit. So all they had Jesus say was, out of your belly shall come flows, uh, uh, shall come rivers of living water. But Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit here, but they had not received the Holy Spirit yet. That was after Jesus was glorified. <clears throat> but we're looking at that knowing that it is the Holy Spirit. For that, that was written based on revelation that they had received from the Holy Spirit. And Isaiah was talking about the same thing. The burning sun shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. So we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The word of God and the Holy Spirit always work hand in hand. We'll talk about the rain falling and making the land wet, the seed growing, producing bread and producing seed to the sower. We've talked about the rain. We've talked about the land, the rain. And we've talked about the seed, which is the word of God. We're just building a foundation. We just want us to sit on these verses and just marinate on them. They, we'll, we'll break it down as we go. So the acting word of God. So the rain, the bread, the seed, all of them have a purpose that God has given them. God is the one who is the source of the rain. He gives the rain. The land soaks up the rain so that it can provide that for the seed. The seed soaks that up and becomes bread. The bread is eaten. The, the sower takes the seed and plants. And God gets the glory. And what God wants fulfilled on earth is done. So the word of God never goes back to him void. Amen. Yeah? Amen. The word of God never returns to him void. Amen. I am aware we time is running short, but we're not going to rush it. Uh, actually, I think it's good we, we, we stop there just so that we can marinate on this. Marinate on these verses that we've just read right now, so that when we come next time, you're, you're soaked. Uh, it's not a pun. Soaked in it. <laughs> the rain. Soaked in it. You know? You're soaked in the, in the words. You're marinated in it. And you're ready for the next part, uh, which will be based on this. So I don't know whether anyone has a question. Yeah, I know your scripture in Isaiah mm -hmm. says jackals. No? Jackals. J jackals, yeah. In the King James, you say in a habitation of dragons. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. The big difference between jackals and dragons. And dragons. Yeah. yeah. So New King James Version, what does New King James Version say? Jackals. Yeah. No, and, no, the New King. Yeah. Jackals. And I think King James said dragons. Dragons. And I think Pastor G is using looking for the what do you call it? The con concordance. Mm -hmm. The strongs. So the strongs is uh, for the strongs basically every single verse it assigns a number to it and uh, it shows you what was the original meaning. So this was written in, I uh, believe, uh, Aramaic, the Old Testament. So it tells you what the original Aramaic term for that is. So Pastor Gabriel will tell us what the original word was. I, I think the other, the same word, mm -hmm. another chapter, another book in the Bible, Mm -hmm. Malachi 1 3 and Ezekiel 32 2 is used as dragon in Malachi 1 3 mm -hmm. and is used as whale in Ezekiel 32 2. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ezekiel 32 2 is used as whale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at the when we actually look at the meaning, the root, it says meaning a monster. And pre naturally formed, mm -hmm. that is a sea serpent, mm -hmm. um, also jackal, 
or other hideous land animals. So he uses the word dragon and whales as well. Okay. So I think, yeah, it's just, I think in different verses, it's just, it's a monster. Mm -hmm. But I think because of the English translation, mm -hmm. whoever was translating in English, because they couldn't find the word in Aramaic, because English is not as descriptive as this word. Mm -hmm. So they decide to use a word mm -hmm. that can just fit okay. in. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. That makes sense. But we do know on that verse, the previous situation was not good. But God changed it. You see, the parched ground became a pool. The thirsty land springs of water. The habitation of these jackals or monsters, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. So this is a very, it's a situation that does not line up with how God intended the situation to be and God changes the situation around. So that's the meaning for us to catch from these verses. I don't know whether anyone has any, I think microphone. New Living Translation said the same jackals, but he said once lived. Once lived, okay, okay. Oh, interesting, interesting. I think the Living Bible says, Desert mm -hmm. Okay, so we can see, we can see with all the different translation, it's a, it wasn't a situation that was good at all. Whether it be a desert or a jackal, monster, whatever situation it was, God turned it around. Mm. Uh, uh, is there anyone with a, another question? Okay, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad we've all understood and you've taken it easy on me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. So I would like to invite uh, uh, Bishop back to... Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise, Praise the Lord. Even for those online, God bless you. For those on Zoom, thank you so much for visiting us. I trust that you were blessed as we were. Amen. Glory to God. Let us be upstanding and... Just stretch our hands to the man of God. We, we thank the vessel of God. Stretch your hands. Speak a blessing over his life. Father, we thank you for the teacher of the word tonight. We are so glad that we could go according to your word. And Lord, that you want to act wonders through us. And use the man of God to use the word that what you have in store for us. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for choosing him. Amen. To share the word. As we were digging deep, Lord, Thank you God. have downloaded to him deep things, Lord. And he has opened you, has used him Amen. to stretch the word so Amen. that even our Sunday school children can understand. Amen. I pray that you will pour more anointing upon his life. Amen. That as he continue to seek your face, that the Shekinah glory of God will Amen. take him and direct him in the past. He Amen. did not understand, Amen. but direct it. I ask this that you will bless his wife Amen. continuously as they serve you in the house Amen. of the Lord. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank we were blessed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let us do the benediction together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. I am the head and not the tail. I am armed and dangerous, unstoppable and unmovable with the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, no weapon that is formed against me or my family shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me or oh, my family in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Shalom. God bless you. Before you leave, don't forget, you are more than welcome to pop in here tomorrow, 8 o'clock. And then on Friday, don't forget, 10 o'clock, we'll be here praying.